Welcome back Air Gunners and today we are in my home workshop and behind me you see my workbench where I not only work on air guns but also the occasional home improvement project too. And that means there is a lack of space in my workshop. And that also means I don't have room for buckets of water, bags of ice or extra hoses but I still have a need for air. And that's where the Benjamin Recharge Compressor comes to play. It's portable, it's self-contained, it's fast and reliable. We're gonna take a look at that and more today on the Airgun Advisor. Welcome back to the show, and today we're gonna to be taking a close look at the Benjamin Recharge Compressor. It is a new compressor that just hit the market in June of 2019, and Benjamin has been kind enough to allow me to run it through its paces to see how it works, operates, and to allow you, the viewer, to help make your mind if you're looking at a compressor to buy. Some of the things I really liked about the compressor and really drew me to asking for a chance to try it was the fact that it is a compact, self-contained unit that is, if necessary, portable because it comes in at under 40 or about 48 pounds and it has a nice carry handle on it so you can carry it from location to location. And I really see this fitting a niche where if you are having a small club and you want to just fill air guns, you can do that. Or if you are uh, running your own uh, kind of in-house shop and you want to fill up tanks for yourself and allow to refill those from 3,000 to 4,500 PSI, this will fit that niche also. Uh, and that's becoming more and more important as air guns are going towards the larger 25, 30 caliber size air rifles and using much more air than what we've used in the past. If you open up the box though, what are you gonna find? First and foremost, you find a uh, nice instruction sheet that's made um, with uh, the user in mind. It's one sheet, kind of poster-like material, very uh, thick and kind of plastic coated so it will last. You have your hoses that you're gonna to use to connect, the, uh, connect to the compressor and then connect to the tank as well as a couple of adapters. You have water uh, filtration, oil filtration filters that go not only inside the compressor, so there's one in here, as well as one that is attached uh, to the hose in this large silver um, container here. And you have, of course, your plug and extra pieces and parts should you need to do any repair. So it comes with these gaskets as well as O-rings and springs and different fittings. So a nice compact package which allows the end user, you or I, to perform maintenance on the unit. And because they provide those parts, it leads me to believe that Benjamin is also going to allow us to order pieces and parts for the compressor in the long run if we need to perform a repair. This little black case does not come with it. It's something that I made, so when I want to um, transport this, I have everything right there when I need it. Looking at the compressor itself, you have on the top, you're going to have a lot of different buttons. You have your water input here, which they use uh, to help cool the system down. You have your thermometer or temperature gauge, which this compressor does shut off automatically at 90 degrees Celsius. You also have your pressure gauge here, which is adjustable. So that means it has an adjustable shutoff. So if you were filling guns, let's say to 200 or 300 PSI, you can set that gauge and the compressor will shut off at the appropriate fill. You also have the cooling system button. The cooling system must be on before the compressor can turn on. I like to turn that on for about 30 seconds, make sure the water is running through the system and ready to begin cooling before I go ahead and turn on the compressor itself. You have the breaker switch and then the plug up top. So everything you need to run and operate the compressor is on top. On the front of the compressor, you have a couple of different things here. First and foremost, this is a compressor that has a motor that requires oil. So I go in ahead and use uh, Valvoline oil, synthetic Valvoline oil. They suggest using 5W40 or a compressor oil of some sort. A lot of people uh, swear by Royal Purple. Both this and Royal Purple are available at your local auto parts store, so you have a couple of options again. The fill for the oil is right 
up here so it is easily accessible. You also have the drain plug down here as well as a nice little window that you can kind of take a look at and see if the oil is full as well as kind of monitor a little bit how dirty it is. Um, but you should definitely follow the instructions and, re and uh, replace the oil as suggested by the manufacturer. You also have, this is where the hose is hooked up to fill your tanks. A, again, a safety relief valve here. And then this is the water release valve or pressure release valve. You open it up and condensation, the water is condensated, will be released as well as the pressure within the system. Um, something to keep in mind with this is that the water that is released in this condensation system is released on the bottom. So whatever you have your compressor sitting on will get wet each and every time that you open up this relief valve. So keep that in mind with where you put your compressor. Make sure it's something that can get wet underneath of it or maybe put something under, under there that will help protect whatever you have your compressor setting on. On this side, let's spin this around again one more time. As you mentioned earlier, your water input is here. So that means your water tank is on the inside and this window allows you to help monitor the water uh, contents inside the cooling system and make sure that it is full each and every time before you use the system. So as you can see it is nice compact handle, um, easy, very friendly to use, but what is going on in the inside and to do that we're going to need to take off the cover. So bear with me while I get my screwdriver and remove the screws. all the screws have been removed let's go ahead and open up the cover and see what is inside so as I take the cover off you're going to notice a couple of things the very first thing that stands out is the water reservoir here that is the heart of the cooling system this is going to be filled with distilled water and it runs through the head of the compressor to keep it cool and from the head of the compressor it runs into two radiators that are both fan cooled. So you have a fan cooled radiator on top and one that is fan cooled on the bottom. And that really does help to keep the temperature down on all the fills that I did. I never came close to approaching the 90 degree automatic shutoff that this system has. Also, you're going to notice this long silver cylinder here. The air from the head of the compressor goes into the cylinder where oftentimes condensation occurs and the condensation then collects at the bottom of the cylinder. In the middle, there is a felt or a cotton uh, filter that I showed you earlier and then it, at the air then exits the system and into your bottle. So when you release the valve, the water that's condensing in the bottom of this is shot out the bottom. There is a way to, uh, to go ahead and change the filters in this and that is part of the normal maintenance routine and we'll cover that in a separate video. On the other side of this compressor though you're going to notice the electronic system. Let me spin this around and you can see all the electronic components here. Right here there is a small um, LED or LCD screen here that will is the timing system that shuts off the compressor automatically after 30 or 40 minutes depending upon what the compressor is set at. I also went ahead and speaking of the cooling system I went ahead and ran the compressor a couple of times without the cover on. I wouldn't necessarily suggest it but I did and just wanted to touch the head of the compressor here and to see how hot it was getting. It did get hot, I will tell you that, but it was not hot enough to actually burn my skin any of the times that I touched it throughout the, or throughout the fill stages of those various cylinders. So that means to me that the compressor and the cooling system are working very well together in doing the job necessary. So what about fill times? The fill times for this compressor for me were very impressive. I'm used to using a shoebox compressor where I have to sit down and let the compressor refill my tanks for several hours and then I can go again on my way. If I'm looking at, and I did test all the variety of sizes that are generally available to air gunners and filling from 300 PSI up to 4,500 PSI and my fill times, they might vary a little bit depending upon uh, the exact if it's exactly 3000 PSI or not, but my fill times approximately were for 90 cubic inch tank, five minutes, a 45 cubic foot tank, which is a 30 minute tank, 15 minutes, 
73 cubic foot tank, and, which is again a uh, 45 minute tank is 22 minutes. And then again, the really big 97, 60 minute tank, cubic foot tank is 35 minutes. So uh, very impressive. Let's say if you were going to try to fill a tank from zero to 4,500. Now we're talking about a little different scenario and you're gonna to have to cycle the compressor several times for the larger tanks. However, if you're just doing a 90 cubic inch tank, which are the typical Benjamin tanks that you can buy, it took 15 minutes from zero to 4,500 PSI. The air was warm the tank did get warm and when it cooled off i did need to top it off again uh, a little bit later down the road but again the fill times were very impressive for this and a real time saver if for some reason your tank isn't full and all of a sudden you get the invite and a couple guys are getting together and want to go shoot and you need to fill your tank this will do it for you so now the major question, would I recommend the Benjamin Recharge Compressor? And in short, yes. I know that it was utilized at the Crossman All-American Field Target Championship. This compressor was also utilized at Crossman headquarters when I picked it up, and now it's been utilized in my shop. So it's got quite a few fills under its belt. I also know that the motor is not a newly designed motor, it's a motor that has withstand a test of time and some other compressors. So that makes me feel good about it. The only thing that I would like to see is where this compressor is in one year or two years down the road. And unfortunately, I can't do that. It's only been released this past June, so it hasn't had much time out on the market. If I do get the opportunity to utilize this compressor for a long period of time, I will let you know and update you on its progress and how it is doing. So hopefully this has helped you just a little bit. Until next time, may your trigger pull stay smooth and your pellets fly straight. And we're gonna see you right here on the Airgun Advisor.